Hey, that's roll. Hey guys, welcome back to my channel. Today I'm going to be doing the thing. It's happened. It's happened. Get ready. It's the Rattlesnake Track Spotlight. If you don't know what Track Spotlight is, um, I did one like three years ago, four years ago even. People really liked it. I did it for my track Daybreak. And what I did was just kind of like go into the project file and break down what it is that makes that track, that track, what I, what I did basically. People really have been going on about doing me doing one for Rattlesnake and I said I would. So I've got the project file open. I'm gonna start recording that and we, we should just dive right in and let's break down Rattlesnake. Here we are, uh, let's just go go straight ahead and jump in. This is Rattlesnake, this is the project file. If I just close everything there, that's what it looks like. We've got my drums in this section. We've got my cymbals, my effects, my synth, and bass. So I've um, I've neatened this project up as well by flat freezing and flattening some tracks to, so that they're like WAV files rather than being MIDI files because it was taking up a lot of CPU. Trying to record the screen and actually play this project file. So I've tried to maximize the efficiency as much as I can. So here is the intro, let's get started. The intro sounds like this. Oh. So that intro compri is comprised of, let's hear what the drums sound like. You know, that's just, you know, samples here and there. Not too much of a big deal, this claps. Obviously we've got that classic. I don't know, I thought that sounded good. Um, that's the drums, the cymbals obviously. So. A few loops and, and samples. The effects is more like sweeps and stuff, I'm not gonna go into that. For the synths we got. So sit under my synth banner I just have anything that's kind of like um, not a bass growly patch or a drum basically or an effect so it's just everything else it's like the instruments really that's like instruments so uh, that's the instrument sound um, I've got my epic strings there I've got that uh, rogue lead basically I took my standard lead sound and kind of messed it up to sound kind of Arabian and like it could be played being played on something uh, like a real instrument. It's all just contact um, for my orchestra stuff. Then we've got the bass. And that's uh, it's a few things going on there. Some of my patches that I've made. So that's a patch in FM8. To tease, tease the kind of rhythm from later on. So that's that. That's the same rhythm as the drop that goes wow 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 wow. That's kind of just to, to like introduce you to that rhythm before it happens. We've got my bass plucky bass going. And uh, then the little voice going. <laughs> Sounds a lot like Pac-Man. Moving on, we've got the instrumental part. It goes between that instrumental and the drop. So that sounds like this. And I'll show you what's going on. That's a clap coming in slowly there. We've got this piano. She's quite pretty. This is just a plucky synth. And this is just where layering comes in, you know. You start adding it all together. You start with the piano, and then you add the... And then there's these little melody parts that I made in Massive as well. There's one in Massive and one in Contact. There. And a little piano doing the same thing. And I think... That's all that's happening really there. And you got the claps. And that little voice. I know, let's do the same thing for this bit. 
Basically in the synth section because there's nothing happening elsewhere really. This. I like adding that in afterwards. That was a later addition. This melody. I've got a choir playing that and a synth. And then there's the little twinkly me melody again and the addition of that high uh, uplifter. And that uplift is only in the back, very background. It's kind of to give a space to the whole thing. And that, that's why I do layering is to make the song have a lot more depth than it would if I just had something playing the chords and something playing the melody. I feel like it really opens it out when it's a big section like that. And you'll notice that these two melodies are the same color. And that's because uh, one derived from the other. I think I did this melody first and then I moved on to this one and I did it's just the same thing so instead of it being it's like a, an Egyptian version it's kind of cool how that that thing right there in the intro introduces this section here and then it kind of builds up I guess So those, those open up and carry on. So that's these plucks pitching up. I'll add some other things in. The patch just introducing that rhythm again before the drop. Bass. Yeah. <laughs> Let's do that again. Gosh, there's loads. Then we've got the fill. I just did the fill like... Very good work. Sounds great in the mix. I'm sorry about the lag, by the way. That's my life now. Laggy Ableton projects that my mat can't handle. And then we've got the little vocal, obviously, that I made, which goes, break it wet. Oh, during the build, we've got the, me shouting as well, me chanting, break it. Break it, break it, break it. Break it, break it. So it gets to there, and then I've got a vocoder. The vocoder says, which is just me. The what is just me. What? It's just a... What? I should have done that before I rendered it out. <laughs> got rid of that little bit. So this has got a vocoder pack thing on it that's linked to an external carrier here. The external carrier is 89 Massive, which is this. So that's carrying this vocal using a vocoder. And then I've got the what. I don't really know what that means. So the drop, this is how the drop is uh, compiled together. We got the kick and the sub happening here. I've got a sub kick patch. I don't know how well you can hear that. That's just plain sub. And then I've got a sub overlayer kind of thing that does that. And adds some kind of mid frequencies to that sound and kind of gives it a bit of a metallic feel again. And then we've got pots and pans, classic. Then we've got further down the main event, which is that patch, which is a patch I made in FM8. I don't know. It's pretty, pretty cool. I'm pretty proud of it. I'm pretty, I'm pretty proud of it. This is the patch in FM8. That's how it goes. It's strange because I didn't know what it was going to sound like when I first started making it. I always start from scratch, by the way. I never use presets. I just make every sound that I want to make from the bass level. I go new sound and then I mess around. The only time I will not start from scratch is when is when I have like something I've made earlier and I want to uh, embellish that. And this is the one that I'm guessing this is what people say sound like pots and pans because when I see uh, people trying to like doing kind of jokey covers of this they're like hitting a pot with a wooden spoon to the rhythm of this so I'm guessing that if it was a pan we wouldn't have such a soft attack it would be like this, a bit more like... Hang on. That 
That sounds more like someone hitting it. Yeah, you can copy that now, I guess. Do what you want. So that's now going to sound like that forever. Not as good. Not as good, really. Okay, moving on. Oh, we've got the second drop. I've got my little growly patches in between. Crunch boy. I'm quite proud of that, actually. It's another FMA, FMA patch with wow and... I really love wow. Now, people seem to think that wow is like like a cheap way to get a vocally sound, but only if you're trying to use wow to make a sound go why or why, but that's not what I do. I, I use it to like give a vocally aspect to the sound like that. Ugh. So without the wow, it sounds like this. So it's not like I've done much. I just gave it a like a sound, which I really like. And then we got me going, whoo. Yeah, so that's uh, that's me going, whoo. And then obviously as it goes further along, I add in elements from before. The hi-hat to come in, and that's how you vary things in like a drop. It's like a kick, snare, a few bits of percussion, and the main patch. Then if you manage to nail that the first time it kicks in, then you have so much scope to move forward in the track, like you can add in the hi-hats, that makes such a difference. The basic version of the drop is is this section here, going into this this hi-hat heavy, cymbal heavy section, and, you, and it makes a difference. The cymbals come in, that vocal comes in, no, no, no. and then that then another one comes in that goes. <laughs> and that's in the background a lot of the time, actually. I forgot to mention it earlier. It's like all the way through the build. It's like coming in here. And we move on to the next drop where the other patch comes in, which is what I said before about patches. That's based on the original patch, so I just kind of duplicated the patch and then messed about with, and it makes that kind of... I don't even know what that sounds like. It sounds like the, a mixture between like a pig and piping, like metal piping. It's like a pig made of metal pipes going... It's like the same kind of thing, but with FM synths, FM8, Especially any little change that you make changes the whole thing. Sometimes you only have to go to oops, where is it? Morph easy easy slash morph tab here in the navigator and change the timbre here of one patch and you'll get something completely different. That's how I would how I ended up making that patch. And then I'd tweak it further from there in the EQ and stuff like that. So, I mean, that's pretty much Rattlesnake. Uh, that's that's how it goes. This is strings, right? Yeah. I'm really proud of this, actually. It sounds like Stranger Things. Like an 80s kind of... Then it builds up to the drop again. Um, but that's, that's basically it. You've seen everything there is to see about Rattlesnake now. What do you think, Pikachu? He's never got anything to say. I give him a place to stay and I give him a place to to live and he just It was it was amazing when when I first released this and Knife Party started playing it in their sets and all that stuff kind of kicked off. Um, it was really amazing for me, that was a dream come true. It was strange to think that I made this like little tune in my room and then that was being played at Ultra Music Festival Miami and I heard that like last week they played it at Ultra Japan as well and that's just like bizarre. Hopefully one day I'll be out there doing shows and playing my own tunes. I'm gonna try and edit this down to be not too long. I hope you enjoyed this video. There's gonna be a lot more content from me on this channel so if you do wanna stick around please subscribe to my channel and uh, feel free to leave a like if you enjoyed the video. I'll see you guys in the next video. Peace out and good night! Freaky, what?